Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreation programming session with Mr. Zuzin. So uh, today we're going to continue developing Coil, the game that we've been developing for some time, but we actually paused the development because I was in the middle of rewriting that game from TypeScript to C3 compiled to WebAssembly. And you know what? I actually succeeded. It's pretty much rewritten in C3, uh, right, so not everything is completely rewritten in C3, but majority of the uh, of the game is actually in C3. So we can actually take a look at all of the MTS files. MTS files are the TypeScript files, but they are modules, right, so they are run in a module mode. And if we concatenate all of them and we count the amount of uh, lines, this is how many lines of TypeScript we have in the entirety of the game. It's not too much, actually, right? So it's just below 500. But how many lines of C3 code do we have in this game? 2,000. 2,000 lines of C3 and 500 lines of uh, TypeScript to sort of glue all of that together. That's basically the idea. That's basically the entirety of the, uh, of the game. So, and the game actually consists of two WASM binaries. The client WASM right and the server wasm so the client wasm is compiled from uh, client c3 right and correspondingly the server wasm is compiled from server c3 uh, they share the logic of updating the world right because clients should be able to update the world on its own uh, and the server should be able to update the world and sometimes they basically synchronize and agree whether the world is in correct state Right, to be able to agree that the world is in a correct state, they need to be able to simulate the world in a similar fashion. Because of that, all of the logic related to the simu simulating of the world that is shareable between client and the server is located in a common C3. So basically, this is module include into the client C3 when we compile client wasm. And this, the same module common C3, is included into server C3 when we compile server wasm. So that's how it works. So then we have a client MTS, which is a TypeScript uh, program, which is then compiled to JavaScript, but that's besides the point. In the future, I suppose uh, all of the JavaScript is going to be TypeScript, right? So if I understand correctly, everything moves towards just ECMAScript supporting the types of TypeScript and the runtimes simply stripping everything off. Right, so everything goes towards that. A lot of JavaScript runtimes already kind of do that, uh, and uh, so there is a, like an experimental browser extension that also does that as well. So TypeScript is basically the future JavaScript anyway. So it's just like an intermediate step that we compile into JavaScript. But uh, I feel like in the future we're gonna have even less JavaScript. At some point, the server part is gonna be completely native. That's my ultimate goal. That the server part is not gonna have any JavaScript at all. Right, it's going to be like a native executable that you just run. And the client is going to be like primarily WASM that just connects to that native executable on the other machine. Right, so in any case, a client MGS, right, so this entire thing, what this entire thing does, one of the things it does, it instantiates the WASM client, right? So it fetches the WASM client, that client.wasm file, uh, right, and instantiates WASM blob. It provides a bunch of the functions that this WASM uh, blob needs, a bunch of functions from the standard C library, math functions and stuff like that, right? So it just expects them to be there, so I provide them. And a, a bunch of platform stuff, right? So. Um, essentially, right now, it, it can play sounds and stuff like that. So basically, some sort of an interface to the platform where the client is running. Uh, right. And this is the functions that the, the client, the wasm blob, can call to do something in the browser. So the blob itself, on the other hand, has a bunch of interesting functions, right? So that we periodically call. Uh, right. So essentially, the, the most important function that we periodically call is probably render game, right? So through a render game function, we just tell the game to render a single frame, right? So we're organizing a loop, uh, so request animation frame. So here is the loop that we're organizing. And within that loop, we're just constantly calling render game. So you have this wasm blob. It has a, func uh, has a function render game, which renders a single frame. And we're just calling it on each frame. Okay. Render the next frame, render the next frame, render the next frame, right? And we also give it the data time, how much time has passed, right? So, and internally, this entire blob maintains its own state, its own state of the game, uh, and then just renders the frames. 
Then, after you rendered a single frame of the game, what we're doing, we are extracting that frame uh, and putting it on the canvas, right? So we have a special function, display uh, so, so back image, um, display swap back image data, whatever. So historically it was called like that, but that doesn't really matter that much. So essentially through a function pixels of display, we extract a pointer in the wasm memory where the pixels of the frame are located. And we just create that data image, image data out of that. And we just put that on the canvas. So that's how it works. We constantly say, okay, render the next frame, give me the pixels, render the next frame, give me the pixels and so on and so forth. Right. So, uh, and here comes the interesting part. How does this blob accept input? Right. So the blob has functions key up and key down, right? When the key up, when key is pressed, these corresponding events are sent into that blob and it modifies its state. So then next time you call render game, that input is going to be taken into account. Right. So now we're thinking about the game as sort of like a, this black box right, into which we need to feed the data and get frames out. And it's completely abstracted away from what the game is actually doing there. We don't freaking know. What we do is just we feed in the inputs, the user inputs into that blob, and we're getting out the pixels that we just put on the screen. Right. So we, we don't give a shit anymore, right? So the only thing we need to do, we just need to provide some capabilities for, for that blob to do something, right? So to play sounds, for instance, it, by itself, it cannot play sounds. Um, so yeah, so when we when the keys are pressed, right? So key, uh, key up or key down, we're just feeding that information into the blob. And the most interesting thing, sometimes we're receiving messages. Sometimes we're receiving messages from, uh, from the network, from the server. How do we feed them into the blob? So there is a special function uh, that takes array buffer and then allocates a temporary buffer, a temporary buffer within the blob's memory, copies the entire bytes of the message into that buffer, and then we feed that pointer into the process message function of the blob. So when we receive bytes from the network, when we receive bytes from the network, we just put them into the wasm memory. We don't try to interpret them at all. Like we don't fucking know. We receive some garbage. Like we put that into the wasm memory, into the temporary wasm memory, and we just give the pointer to the process message of that blob, and blob already parses it and decides what to fucking do with that. And through this mechanism, blob receives information about new players connected, some player position is updated, and so on and so forth. So this is basically how the blob itself communicates with the server, right? So, but the the, uh, the glue code outside of the game doesn't know anything about like how the game the game works and all. So the, the process message, as you can see, it returns a boolean. So and essentially, if it returns false, that means uh, something bad happened within process message. For example, message was incorrect, uh, right? And in that case, it's an indication for the platform for the platform where the game is running to just close that specific connection to the server. Right, so it's just like the blob telling it something went wrong. There's no point in communicating with that server anymore. Just drop the connection and go into the offline mode. Right, so that's that's basically how it works. And that's it. So in the entire thing, in the entire client is like 336 lines of code. And as you can see, there's a lot of comments in here, right? For to do's and stuff like that. But I mean, it's just 300 lines of code. It just like, you know, facilitates the, the, the game itself. The game, the blob itself, is in fact uh, almost thousand lines of code of C3, right? So you see how it all abstracted away, right? So now we're thinking in terms of this wasm blob, and we're just feeding shit into that wasm blob, receiving the pixels. And the wasm blob itself is is here. It's it's a pretty big and complicated thing, and it does the actual game and stuff like that. So interestingly, server is implemented in a similar fashion. The only reason kind of why server still has JavaScript part is because it needs um, WebAssembly connections, right? So we don't really have a C3 WebAssembly library yet, right? One of the ideas that I have is to eventually make a session where I implement my own C3 WebAssembly uh, library. Uh, and once I do that, we'll be able to completely get rid of the JavaScript on the backend. Uh, so uh, WebSocket, yeah, so the, all the communication with the game is happening within the WebSocket, uh, right? So we will need to support WebSockets at some point. So, but anyway, uh, interestingly, uh, not everything is moved into the blob at the client. 
not everything is moved into the blob at the client. So we have a little bit of a problem with the assets, right? So we take a look at the function that is called on each frame to render the next frame, which is called render game. Uh, all right, so I, I even put a to do here so that this render game should be probably called tick, right? So, but anyway, so what it accepts, it accepts too many images, right? As you can see, it accepts a lot of like image assets for keys, for the bombs, for particles, for walls, for the player, and so on and so forth, right? And the way those um, things are created, right? So let's actually find the call to this thing. They are within the asset manager, right? So here is the key image pointer. And the way it is created, it is created through load wasm image. Load was an image, just received the image, then takes its pixels, put them into the WebAssembly module uh, and WebAssembly memory, and returns you the point of where that location is. So essentially, to just load all of the images up, right, so we have to go through these loops of first being in JavaScript, querying the image, then giving that to the blob, the pointers and stuff. It's, it's just kind of weird. And to be fair, this is a place with a huge amount of complexity that should not be even there. Uh, so the solution to this problem with managing the assets and stuff like that is rather simple. And this is something that I already employed in Olive C demos, right? So we, we can take a look at the Olive C if anyone is interested, right? So I am uh, Olive C. Uh, I'm going to put that thing in the chat and also in the description for anyone who's interested. So do we have the description? So here it is. So here is Olive C. And uh, this thing has kind of a similar um, approach, right? So it has it uses some resources to, to render things. But these kind of images, they are not fetched from the server at all. They are literally baked into the Wasm blob. Especially things like 3D, right? So let's actually find some 3D. So all of that stuff is baked into the Wasm uh, and especially this kind of stuff. So this entire teapot is part of the Wasm module. So you never have to retrieve that data from anywhere. So it's just, it's just there. So you need to bake it. Uh, so interestingly enough, the, the way I bake it in C, Right. The way I bake binary data in C is that I usually write some sort of a program uh, that takes the binary data and converts it into C array. I, I can actually show you how it looks like in Olive C specifically. So uh, I think so. Here is the build, and here are some of the compiled assets. Right. So for example, Lava Stone. Right. So it's some sort of an image, and as you can see, I automatically generated this array of pixels for that specific image. So then in the C code, I can just grab. Um, this array and treat it as already loaded image. So what I want to do uh, in today's session is essentially take all of these assets that I feed into the render game and just bake them into the Wasm executable and just remove all of that shit already. Just like I don't want the um, you know the glue code, the JavaScript glue code, to be even concerned with this kind of stuff. Ultimately. I want all of the assets of the game be either part of the Wasm, like everything is just like put into the Wasm mod, uh, blob, or being a separate blob that can be fetched with a single fetch and then given to the to the Wasm blob, right? So I think that simplifies the uh, asset management management dramatically, and this is how the serious serious old school uh, game developers do that anyway right so when they're managing their assets they just like basically concatenate them into into a single blob they have a little bit of a meta information with the offsets where files are located and stuff like that and there you go so th that's basically it that's the simplest way to manage it and it's actually very effective uh coil what yeah yeah so something like coil what <laughs> right so something like this uh, zipped to be fair i don't think it has to be zipping has to be done on the level of the game if we're going to be serving it over web server it's the responsibility of the web server to do zipping honestly right so i don't think we, we are the ones who should actually zip anything um so it should be the uh, zips already exactly exactly so i don't think it's that uh, much of a concern so but what's interesting is that we're not programming in c by the way 
We're not programming some stinky old language from a 70s. <laughs> We're programming in the evolution of C, which is called C3. And obviously C3, being an evolution of C, must provide some sort of a mechanism of simplifying this kind of scheisse minor front. It must provide some kind of scheisse. And in fact, it fucking does. So let's actually take a look at that. I don't remember how it's called. So it's kind of similar to C3 embed. Yeah, yeah. So not C3, C embed. C recently got a, a thing called embed, which nobody implements except Clang recently. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I think it's not in, in a, like a stable release of uh, any of the compilers. But we have something like that in C3. Uh, so let me see. Is it embed? I forgot the name of this thing. Yeah, it's, it's literally embed. Uh, it's literally called embed and embeds binary data uh, from a file. So let's take a look at it. Uh, yeah. Where is it? Why did you why did you put me constant expressions? Oh, here it is. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So essentially, you can just take an image and embed it and assign it into an array of characters of unknown size. Right, so this star just means that we don't know the size of this array, but it's going to be known at compile time anyway. Right. We as programmers don't know the size of the array, but the compiler will know at compile time the size of this array because of the embed, because it's going to be the size of the uh, file. Right. So that's basically what star means. Programmer doesn't know the size of the array. The compiler does know. Right. So without the star means nobody knows the uh, the size of the array. Neither the compiler nor the, nor the programmer. Right. But it's going to be known at runtime on the computer running computer of the program knows the size of that array. So that's basically the meaning. Uh, right, and uh, so this is essentially what we can do. So it, it sounds pretty simple, right? Just like basically take all of the PNG images and just like create global variables of that stuff and you're good to go. But no, do, 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 do. here we're including PNG. And PNG is not straight up a row array of pixels. It's a format that you have to parse and also uncompress because it contains a little bit of a compression. So you're not just taking the pixels of the image. You're taking the contents of the PNG file that then inside of the WASM blob, you will still have to parse. The cool thing of the approach that we have in here is that the parsing of the PNG is done by the browser. You don't have to think about that, like it's already parsed by the browser. But here, if you just, just include it, if you just take the uh, bytes of the PNG, you're on your own. Do whatever the fuck you want. So the adventure doesn't really stop here, honestly. The adventure doesn't stop at just including PNGs. You need to parse them somehow. Luckily, we, we kind of have a solution for that, uh, So, which is the uh, STB image uh, header on the libraries, right? So the cool thing about Nothing's um, you know, STB libraries is that they are so minimalistic and so detached from the C runtime, they still use libc a little bit, but they usually have some sort of a flags and macros that allow you to not use uh, libc. So it is possible. So people even use that in Embedded. And because of that, they are compilable to WebAssembly. These libraries work literally anywhere, including in a browser. Isn't that insane? It's actually kind of cool. So uh, we'll need to. Uh, we, we can probably use this thing. And how can we use that? So there's two ways we can go about that, right? So I already see uh, people suggesting some things. Uh, image row. So essentially what we can do, we need to take the images and convert them into their raw state. And in that case, we'll be able to just um, to just include them into the into the game. And that's it. Right. So that's one of the things we can do. Uh, right. But that means we'll have to create a third party tool. Right. So that that complicates the building process. So now the building process should first build the tool, then run the tool on the, all of the assets, collect them into the blobs, and then only compile the main application. So it's additional step in the entire thing. And what that tool is going to be written in? That tool is probably going to be written in 
um, in C because it's easier to interact with the STB image, right? It's probably going to be written in C, so that means we need a C compiler now. So to build this entire project, you will need npm node C3 compiler and C compiler. To be fair, uh, you will probably need a C compiler anyway, right? Even if you're going to be using STB image as part of the WASM blob and doing the parsing in a runtime. So I feel like the complexity is rising in this case, regardless of what you do, unless you implement your own PNG parser, unless you do that. And PNG parser in C3 and just embed it in there. But we're definitely not going to be doing that because it's like too time consuming. It would be kind of cool, right? So to just like have that, but I mean, we're definitely not going to be doing that. So it boils down to what's bigger, the STB image code or all uncompressed images. Yeah, basically. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. And what's interesting is that um, there will be a little bit of a problem with memory allocation in C3 uh, because um, STB image uses its own memory allocator, right? And it's customized through macros. So one of the things we want to be able to do, we want to be able to replace the allocator that STB image uses with the C3 allocator. And um, I don't really know how to do that outside of the macro system of STB3. So let me actually see. So STB, I think it's alloc, um, STB I malloc. Yeah, there we go. So this is what you have to redefine in here on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, so what they're doing, they are referring specifically to the classical standard uh, C functions, right? malloc, realloc, and free, which we can maybe just say we can compile it to object file. We can just compile it to object file and um, then just, you know, create versions in C3 and link with them or something like that. So that could be an idea. That could be an idea that we could have. So in any case, that's basically everything uh, I have right now, right? So let's just jump into the implementation of this entire show. So let's actually try to find an approach that will work uh, for us. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I probably will need to do, I'll need to download STB image, right? So that's the first prerequisite. Um, is that how you pronounce this word? I don't really know. I don't speak English. I'm sorry. I'm German. I don't speak English. Uh, <clears throat> so STB image, I kind of want to try the idea of linking STB image with the WASM blob and parsing PNG at the runtime. I want to try this idea. I want to see how well it's going to work. So one of the things we'll have to do, we'll have to compile STB image, uh, right? So into the object file, right? So it's gonna, this is going to be STB image. So minus C means that I'm compiling it into stb file uh, into object file so stb image and also i need to put uh, the language b in c because because of the h it will recognize it as a different language why does it keep killing my entire mini buffer excuse me uh right c x c stb image dot h right so let's go and just run this entire thing okay so it compiled uh stb image but but the problem here is that i won't be able to even link this entire object file with my wasm because this is an object file for elephant stuff right you see what i'm talking about right so i won't be able to link it and furthermore it doesn't contain the implementation of the library right because one of the things we have to do in here is to do dstb image implementation right so that's the first thing we have to do probably uh let's go and does it yeah so now it contains uh, the entirety of the implementation so if i try to in the build.js so i'm using javascript as a shell script for building things yes i, I, I do that to simplify to reduce the amount of moving parts you need uh right so because if i'm going to start using shell that means you need another language interpreter essentially um so all right so for example if i try to build client 
And as far as I know, even if the object file was compatible with C3, I won't be able to do that yet. So let's disable the server and let's disable the TypeScript. And I'm going to try to do npm run build and let's see what's going to happen. So this is what we're building. And as you can see, it failed. A known file type is to be image O, right? It doesn't accept object files through the usual file command lines. You have to pass them, I think, through the linker. To pass the shit through the linker, you have to put minus Z, right? So when, when you put minus Z, that means the next flag goes into the linker. So we're actually linking this thing with all of that stuff. So even if we do it like that, it's not going to work. Uh, the linker will probably complain also with the known type, right? So fail to create an executable, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. So the reason is that uh, we're trying to compile to Wasm platform, right? So, but this thing was just compiled to uh, Linux uh, x86-64, blah, 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 blah. So that's basically the problem. Uh, one of the things we can try to do, we can try to build um, this thing with Wasm, right? So let me actually see. So maybe we can just straight up take this target flag, right? And put it in here, right? So let's actually tell Clang to use the same thing. Since C3 uses LLVM, it's basically like Clang, right? It's basically like Clang. Um, object files and command lines should be fixed in main. I open an issue about it and it's completed. Uh, in main, but I'm using the latest C3 version, so I didn't really know. I, ju I just compiled it and it doesn't work. Um, so, I don't know. So maybe I didn't compile the latest version. Uh, okay, so the target... Ah, oh yeah, it's it's not that. Okay, that, well, all right, so we're getting a pretty interesting start. Uh, no such file. Okay, so I'm compiling it in a in a wrong place. Okay, so that's fair. Uh, let's compile it in here. Okay, so yeah, since we're compiling it for Wasm, we don't have STDIO. So one of the things we can do, we can just straight up disable it. Yeah, this is the cool thing about STB libraries is that uh, this stuff is disableable. Right, so like you don't want to use this thing, like you're working with an environment where you don't have the standard library, just just disable it right just freaking disable it um so let's go ahead and do that so i'm gonna say okay disable that and stb leap and this is where it breaks down i didn't think it is disableable that easily specifically std leap um so i don't know like you you, you can't disable it right away um so we post this environment to bypass i think one of the things we can do okay so let's do the following stuff I'm not going to disable that, right? I'm going to just allow that. But um, I think we should just allow undefined, right? So there's one linker flag that just enables you to allow some of the undefined functions and the WASM module is going to basically expect them from the environment, right? So that's what is going to happen. So I don't remember. I think if you just pass this flag in here, it will not work because it's a linker flag. So one of the things we have to do, we have to say that it's a linker flag. This is how you define them, right? So it's WL and comma and shit like that. Okay, it still complains about uh, std.h, right? So even though we allowed and defined, um, and, and we never really said that no standard library. So that's a bit bizarre. Um, that's a bit bizarre. How can I say they just like include everything, assume the standard library, but just allow undefined functions? I'm not really sure because that worked before. That worked before. That worked at least in Olive C. So let, let me see how we do that in Olive C. So because like I, I I don't know, it's kind of bizarre. So allow undefined. So that's basically the stuff we have. Well, yeah, so we just doing F no built in, no standard libraries, but this is because the code does not include any of that stuff anyway. What if we have a situation when the code does include some functions from the standard library, but uh, we're going to provide our own functions anyway? Is there any way to do that somehow? Is there any way to do that somehow? Clang flags war, it drives me insane each time. Yeah, exactly. Especially if we, we want to do something about WebAssembly, it's just like it's always a pain in the ass. Uh, just like with any web technologies, right? So as soon as you, just, as you start, start including web technologies anywhere, uh, so it just turns into shit. Um, 
custom std lib h in a in a cool uh, directory probably that's one of the things we can do but uh, here's the interesting thing we have a copy of cb image we're going to be committing that copy into the uh, into the repo that means we can do whatever the fuck we want with it anyway we can modify that we can just comment out some things we can just like hack it together it's not like um we're like downloading it from third-party repo or whatever it's part of our source code we are responsible for that code now we can modify it however we want that's kind of the beauty of this like simple libraries because you can modify them um right so let's go ahead and uh, freaking do that so uh where is the thing i'm gonna try to compile it so it complains about that i'm going to disable the uh you know stbi no stdio uh all right and what if i just literally disable it um okay so the, it includes it twice night well what's funny is that it finds std arc and std dev but std leap uh std leap is out of the question okay string is also out of the question okay that's cool and math um i suppose is also out of the question right so assert is also out of the question um so we can probably define our own assert to actually circumvent that um so stbi assert is going to be actually empty uh and now it wants to have malloc right so and now it complains okay so it complains about missing functions uh, and this is exactly where we want to allow undefined. And did we allow undefined? I think I think we will allow allowed undefined. Uh, right. So implicit declaration called and declare function malloc with the type void. I saw C99, but we're not using. This is not a pedantic shit. Like, why are you acting so pedantically about this kind of stuff? Just allow that. Why is that an error? Um, that's that's kind of bizarre. So what if I do std C11? uh right it, i mean it's like an iso why is it so pedantic i don't understand bro stop being so pedantic uh maybe if we try uh to do something like this and we'll be able to get rid of xc uh, and this is just going to be c all right uh forward declare but I mean, C usually just allows you to use, you know, undefined functions. But maybe this is the latest clang that doesn't allow you to do that. It could be just the latest clang. All right, you know, I've got an idea. What if I just enable all of these things? As uh, Siphon actually suggested, uh, stb lib. All right, so let's actually do that. Uh, and it's not going to compile, but let's actually include our own versions of these things, like literally. Uh, all right, so... It, ca it cannot find them, but then I'm going to say, okay, uh, just look for these things in the current path. All right, so now it cannot find a string. Uh, okay, so let's actually open string.h. Uh -huh. Now it cannot find math. Let's actually create uh, math.h. I think I already did that before. Yeah, okay. That's cool. So, and now, uh, finally enough, it complains about malloc. We can forward declare malloc stuff now. For instance, in stdlib, right? Void uh, malloc, and uh, what's the signature of malloc specifically in terms of like arguments and stuff like that? So let's actually see. So manual, this is the malloc, so it accepts this stuff, right? So that's the thing we have. Uh -huh. So what else do we have in here? Uh, it doesn't know a size t, right? But isn't it coming from the definition in the std def? Uh, it's not defined it's actually include and to be fair we need to have an inclusion guard because stdb lib std lib is included two times right so it's a two timer so that means we need to guard it std lib.h right so i'm going to also define this thing and this is the end if like that all right what else do we have in here so stb free uh all right so yeah so we're implementing our own stand library yet again <laughs> So this is going to be a pointer. Uh, what else do we have in here? Memset. Okay. So uh, I suppose it's part of the string, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So this is going to be memset. We can even... Yeah. So we have to go through this weird process of just taking all of these standard functions and just like 
declaring them and maybe even potentially implementing them because who said we can't just implement them at some point we can uh, we can implement them honestly uh we can actually what is this syntax damn this is a cool syntax it just means that you pass a pointer pass an array of the size n but it's coming from man is that a c syntax does anybody know if that's some sort of a GNU extension or something? This is actually super cool. Uh, now it's a okay. It would be kind of cool that if like a compiler, if a compiler knows size of the end, it can check that at compile time. Uh, you only seen this syntax in my pages. I suppose this is like um, for documentation purposes, like in Win API, uh, there's like markers of input output parameters, but they are just macros; they don't mean anything, um, right? So this is actually kind of cool. Right, so it would be interesting if like C just supported all of that stuff, uh, but anyway. So mem copy. Uh, so it's gonna be eleven, and we're gonna, so and it also has restrict and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So some restrict stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what else do we have in here? So assert. It doesn't know anything about assert. Uh, so in this to be stdlib we can actually maybe define stbi assert it accepts like something and just replace it with nothing uh what else do we have in uh macro redefined hmm it's actually defined before uh how are we gonna be doing all of that so um it needs to be defined before anything else. How do you define function macros from the command line arguments? Mm -mm. I suppose I can wrap around stb image, right, with std image top, which is also c, which just includes uh, stb image image c, right, and just defines uh stbi assert nothing like that right so it just defines that so i suppose and we also have to uh properly compile it so it's a top all right so what is it saying here it's redefined but it has to be uh stb image let's remove that in here uh still doesn't like that um so macro re how is that redefined bro previous defini what Oh, STBI, STBI assert. Ah, I defined it in command line argument. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. So that's basically the reason. Okay, okay, that explains it. Pow, pow. So it needs the math. Um, so can we get rid of the math? Can we get rid of the math? You know what? I think this is a good indicator that this is not the path we want to go. Right, so the path we're going, by the way, the path we're going is... Uh, essentially, let's bake the library into the game, right, and parse the PNG on the game. This is probably not a good way to do that. So, if this is the stuff we have to go through to do all of that, just to get the image into the game, maybe fuck that. So, the other approach is to have a third-party separate tool, which is going to be, by the way, native, which is going to have an access to libc and so on and so forth. Right, so we're not going to have any problems. First, prepare the binary blob and then include it into the game. So, yeah, I, I guess this is a good uh, indication of that. So, and we didn't really fail with this entire thing. We just gathered information, right? So this is how you, by the way, assess uh, whether it's worth doing that by literally doing that and seeing if it's worth of do doing that or not. So before I went into like this implementation, I didn't know that I'm going to encounter all these problems. I think I kind of encountered them before, but I already forgot about that, right? So what I just did, I just gathered a little bit of information. I estimated whether it's worth doing this thing and decided, eh, it's probably not worth doing that. There's nothing wrong with that, honestly, right? So a lot of web developers like quite often feel ashamed when they commit to a certain way of doing that and that way turns out not to be the way not the good way to do that since they're already committed doing it this way they're kind of ashamed to like backtrace their their thoughts and try something else 
right so because that, that that feels like they failed right so but but in that case i think you should not be ashamed of that right so because you didn't fail you estimated whether it it's worth doing a certain thing right it is what it is and uh, we came to a conclusion that it's, it's it's not worth it honestly it's just not worth it so let's build a separate tool maybe in c3 by the way we can actually build it in c3 let's build a separate tool um and which is going to process the uh you know the assets and turn them into the binary blob and then we're going to feed that binary blob into the game right i'm already 100 sure that this is what we want to do but i'm already streaming for like one hour almost right so on twitch and i think i i want to make a small break right i want to make a cup of tea and all that just so um all right we're back so let's go ahead and just implement the tool that is going to facilitate the preparation of the assets for our game. Holy shit, I didn't know I, I knew such words. So how should we actually call uh, such thing? So maybe we call it Packer. Uh, so it's going to be C3. We're, we're going to write it in C3, by the way. It's going to be called Packer. Uh, right, so it's going to be main, like so. And it's going to be a native application native application i'm going to import stdio io and i'm going to say print and hello hello right because we're in germany right now uh so c3c compile run packer c3 let's go so that seems to be working okay that's pretty cool and it's also automatically uh just created uh this entire thing um, like I don't like how many moving parts this will create in the build process and all of these building parts moving parts will be have to be glued together with something I suppose for now it's gonna be JavaScript maybe as soon as we get rid of the JavaScript we're gonna use C3 to build C3 in a knob style we'll see we'll see but I really don't want to overcomplicate the building process in terms of the amount of you know different languages i i have to use to just build the thing um uh, right but anyway so we need to link with uh, stb image right so we need to link with stb image so we have a build.js uh this is where we're doing all of that interestingly there is a little bit of a problem with cmd uh function that we use in build.js and the problem here is that it is asynchronous right in the sense that yeah it just it just returns you a process but it runs this process synchronously sometimes we'll need to make the processes wait for a little bit and i'm not 100 percent sure uh so for now it's not written in typescript or anything so i want to find documentation for node.js child process and see what child process can do right so when i do how do i spawn so there is a function spawn Spawn, right? So that's the function we're talking about. Um, yep. So prepare a child to run independently of its parent process. Okay. So in what it returns, it returns a thing called child process and child process itself. Uh, all right. So yeah, you can. We can actually specify different kinds of dependencies, right? So because it has events, if I'm not mistaken, right? so close the close event is emitted after process has ended and the stdio of the child process has been closed this is one of the things we can do which is rather interesting in my opinion which is we can just call a cmd all right so and i'm trying to just build clang or build a stb image right so how we're going to be building stb image so do we have yeah, so this is what we want to do in here. We're not going to be building for the target. We're not going to be doing any of that. Uh, right, so we're going to be just building it the normal way. Um, so, and it's going to be probably just H, X, C, and just the implementation. So in terms of the STB image itself, I think I want to actually start over, right? So because I made modifications to that thing and I don't remember what modifications I did. So just in case, uh, I want to re-download the whole thing, All right? So just to be hundred percent sure, because you never know, uh, right? So yeah, this is how we're going to be building all of that stuff, and I wonder if we can do a little bit of a Emacs magic, right? So I'm going to say anything that is not space. It's not really good way to do that, but anyway, anything that is not space, capture that shit, 
capture that shit and just replace it with that shit but wrapped in quotes can your beam do that it can i know <laughs> uh so essentially uh, it's very fucking easy no very fucking easy so let's do cmd um and one of the things we can do since it returns the child process we can do something like on close on close and uh close accepts a f yeah function so it's, it's data but we're gonna ignore this entire thing and we're gonna wrap this entire shit into that and essentially this creates a very interesting thing all of the commands below are called only after this command is done it even syntactically creates an interesting structure isn't it though yeah, I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but but I want to try that. It's kind of an interesting idea, right? So you can kind of like create dependencies, right, uh, in here, right? So first you you build that thing because the consequent things depend on that thing. But within a single thing in here, these two commands can be run simultaneously because they're independent. So you, you kind of decide yourself what kind of like structure in, of independent things you have in there. Uh, it's more like a callback hell. And eh, really, actually, not really. So it basically turns into a tree, right? It's a tree of dependencies, so to speak. But I mean, the dependencies usually build dependencies. They're not tree. They're usually acyclic cyclic graphs. So, and this is where the problem may start arrive, organizing all that stuff. And be because of that, make file this thing. But for now, for now, I'm going to do it like that. As soon as the complexity starts exploding, I'll try to come up with a better approach. It's just right now, this is the easiest thing to do. So, <laughs> just say it. <laughs> it's just the easiest thing to do. So, uh, all right, L let me see if we can we can do that. Uh, by the way, why am I commenting out? I specifically created this sort of thing in here. So the reason why I'm doing it like that is because now building TypeScript is enabled. I can disable by removing exclamation mark. And then I can enable it again by adding it. So I can take a, ho a whole block and easily enable, disable. It's the other way around. Enable, disable, enable, disable, enable, disable, enable, disable. For instance, in here, there is entire block of 32 lines of code. I can also just disable the entire thing. Re enable it again. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, uh, just for testing purposes. Can your rest do that? 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 Okay, I'm gonna tell you one secret. It's not the language that can't do things. It's, you know who, the programmer. So anyway, um... <laughs> philosophy uh, mm -mm. it's not about language right you can do anything in any language right so when somebody said oh it's impossible to do that and like no it's, it's not about the language it's that means that they, they can't do that and that's already a skill issue my friends that's already a skill issue if i saw one oh <laughs> um sorry uh, what the fuck is, is that in this tea? Anyways, and this shit doesn't even fucking work. Missing script build JS. How, how is that missing script? Oh, because it's, it's like that. Okay. All right. Okay, that, that worked kind of. Honestly, yeah. So essentially, mm -hmm, so where we were building. So we built these two things, but I don't fucking see. Ah. So here's the clang, and then it kind of failed. Can we actually see why it failed? All right, so let me comment out this entire thing, and I want to just take the data uh, of this stuff, and I want to just consolidate that data. Consolidate that data, cons it's zero. So it actually successfully compiled, that's what it means. That's pretty cool. What if I... What if I uh, put something like that in, the, in here and say, okay, it doesn't compile. It returns one. So essentially what that means, that means we can do if data equal to zero, only then do this kind of thing. 
Um, but that probably means we'll have to maybe create an additional thing in here, like so. Uh, all right. And maybe it would be easier to just do something like this. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah. If there is any error, the consequent things are not going to be run at all. Look at that. So the dependency has failed. The dependency has failed. None of these things were run. As soon as the dependency did not fail, the consequent commands do in fact run. So as of right now, I, I know this, this is a stupid solution, which is, smells like a callback hell, but it kind of works for what I'm trying to do in here, honestly. So it's kind of cool. In the future, probably, we're going to have problems with this kind of thing. Um, and honestly, it would be better if it, all of that was like promises and stuff. Like, is there any spawn that returns a promise instead of uh, the process or whatever? That would have been cool. They probably have to use some promisifier or whatever the fuck it is, and they're just not in the mood of, uh, you know, exploring that right now, right? So I'm not in the mood of doing too much JavaScript. If you know what I'm talking about, my friend, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so the next thing we need to do. We need to do the backer. We need to do the backer. Uh, so it's going to be CMD. Uh, it's going to be C3C. Uh-huh. Might as well actually not only do compile, but also compile run. So that's one of the things we can do. Uh, compile run. And when I'm compiling, I'm going to be doing compiler uh, packer C3. And in here, I'm also going to be doing Z. So to Okay, so people say that in the latest one, the problem with OBG has been solved. So that means I should be able to do something like, uh, like this, OBG O. Right, I should be able to do something like this. So let's figure it out. Let's see if it's going to work. People told me that it's supposed to work. It is working. Okay, so Siphon was right. But it was not fixed for target, uh, wasn't. It was not fixed for target, wasn't. Damn. So if I really put... Uh, but I mean, it was failing because it was not wasn't nonetheless. Okay, so whatever. All right, so this is actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I suppose this is, uh, they, they fixed it because of, yeah, because, because Stefan Latea actually uh, submitted an issue, okay. Like, it's super cool that some people finally started to use this language, because this language has pretty interesting potential, it's a pretty interesting language, but it's very fucking unpolished. And it's unpolished because nobody uses it. And nobody uses it because uh, it's unpolished, right, so it's sort of like a, you know, like a deadlock. That is very difficult to get out of, right? So I, I'm I'm glad that we started uh, to use it a little bit and started to contribute back the feedback. So finally, it can go in some direction, right? Unpolished, kurva matia, pierdol. Anyways, so we compile this entire thing, and um, so people are su submitting gifts and shit. I need to acknowledge that. Holy fuck. Thank you so much, Xcar Dix, for, for a Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Malak All Things, thank you so much for gifting subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Apologies. Um, so we run this entire thing. So how are we going to be actually approaching the packer? Uh, I'm thinking that we're going to... Um, maybe how to code the list of the resources that we have right now. So let's go ahead and do that. One of the things I can do probably is just ls uh, as assets uh, images, right? So eh, I didn't see choice. So it's it's uh, custom images. Okay. So what if I actually do that without L? So then I can grub uh, this thing and maybe turn it into some sort of a list. Boom. Uh, yes, please. Thank you very much. Then let's take this entire stuff and uh, just push it in here. And then I'm going to do it like that. Okay. So here we're going to have uh, files, uh, images, image files. I think that's a, that's a good name for this entire thing. Um, and I suppose one of the things we'll have to do in here is to specify that it's uh, this thing. Uh -huh. So let's do for each, and this is going to be file, image files, and io, print, and uh, file. 
let's go so let's do build uh-huh and it failed because we didn't put a new line in here, a semicolon okay so as you can see we have files in here which is nice uh what we can do now is um you know load each individual file with stb image to be able to load it with stb image what we have to do we have to use stbi load uh where is that not really load from memory but just stbi load i'm trying to find the definition okay so here is the definition of this function i think we just need to forward declare this entire stuff so this is you see um so if i understand correctly this is just an unsigned char let's assume that this is just a char it's going to be pointed to the char so this is going to be file name as far as i know in c3 you have z string which is just like a zero terminated string uh pointers to this stuff and that's about it right so we have this kind of thing so and after that we can just do stbi load uh, file name so here's the file name uh, in here we're going to have x and y so we're going to pass pointers to x and y so then we want to have amount of components so we don't really care about the amount of components in here uh, and the amount of required components is going to be four specifically right so and this gives me the pixels right so this is essentially the pixels and if pixels is equal to null uh, that means we couldn't load that file specifically we want to say something like uh, error could not load file as with a new line of course uh, it's going to be file name so and we're going to continue actually going through the files and if we can load the file we're going to say something like uh, print f s d d uh, file name x and y so we're printing the file name and the size of the file simultaneously all right so something didn't compile because this looks like a beginning of a file oh yeah, yeah you're supposed to put a fn in here uh okay it's to be load uh so this thing has to be external function uh implicitly casting c string to the string is not permitted uh implicitly so do we have can I just do this string? Is it going to work correctly? I feel like it might not work correctly, but it did. It in fact it did work correctly. As you can see, we managed to actually do, uh, like load all of these things pretty easily. So yeah, is that poggers? Is that poggers? I think it's pretty freaking poggers. So it, it was easy. Right, so compiling STB image is easy when you just have a standard library. So whatever I said about STB being not too much dependent on standard library, I lied to myself. But I mean, it's kind of true, all right? If you spend a little bit of time, you can kind of strip off all of the um, lipsidness of this library and it's going to work fine. And it's just like I didn't feel like doing that. So, so I didn't. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh it is what it is um so how are we gonna be doing all of that i think we need to maybe create uh a buffer into which we're gonna be appending the the files uh, or maybe images and not even images but bytes uh what would be better to do i don't freaking know maybe first collect all of that into the buffer or stream it into the file to be fair, we don't really have that many assets for this to become a problem. So we can just first append everything into the memory buffer, right? We, we have 16 gigabytes, by the way, speaking of, uh, we have 16 gigabytes. Can I see that? Yeah, there we go. Look at that. So look, look how much memory we have. It says 15. Oh, I remember there is a way to actually show it in here. It says 14. Did it get scanned or is that again uh, Gibby bytes and gigabytes or whatever the fuck it is? I, I think, yes, I think it's Gibby bytes. Uh, right, so scammed um, 14. And it's not that much, right? So, um, yeah. but I mean, wait, so if you multiply that, it's gonna be m uh, megabytes, kilobytes, bytes. Right, and then you start dividing it by a thousand, thousand, thousand back. And scammed. Actually fucking scammed. Anyway, whatever. So we, we have a lot of memory, right? So we have a lot of memory. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, even the manager, even the manager who actually sold that laptop to me told me that, yeah, I, I forgot that one gig is just will go straight to the RAM because it's iGPU. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I didn't get scanned. I just forgot. Yeah, so everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but I mean, to be fair, eight gigabytes even on old laptop was enough for me. Um, so fifteen gigabytes is just like a pretty much overkill. Um, so I don't, I don't know what to fill that memory with. A pictures of Panger. Uh, so let me go. Do we have a, some sort of like a dynamic array? Uh, dynamic string, I would even say. Dynamic string with this. So is there something like a core string? There was a D string. Yeah, boy. D string. So, and in a D string, you can do, you can create a new one with a certain capacity. All right. Or just a new one. Wait, C3 has default arguments? Yo, that changes everything. I needed that when I was... I, okay, that's actually pretty cool. So uh, I will be using that. Uh, so how do we append? So we can do new concat. Mm -hmm. So there is a capacity. Okay, so you can append some UTF-32. Uh, okay. Ooh, you can append repeat, right? So you can repeatedly append some things in here. Uh, what kind of things you can append? Can I just append? You can append Z string. That's actually super cool. Um, append chars. Where is the append chars? There was a function append chars. Yeah. So it's a string. Um, but it's a. It's a shame that it's literally a string. How can I construct a string out of something, out of, for instance, out of the pointer and a side? Is there any way to do that? Does anybody know? So we have a string module, right? So let's take a look at the string module. Um, so there should be a way to do that. So maybe there is, okay, there's new. There's a lot of new functions, new format Z, join new, new split. There must be a way to construct a new string. So, and also, okay, so, oh, it's just a, okay. So, it's basically a slice of character, if you think about that. It's basically a slice of character. Uh, how can I can, can create a slice out of just point, uh, yeah, from row parts, exactly. We, we have the, the Rust developers in the chat, the Rust developers know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so in Rust, usually this pattern from row parts where you have a pointer, like usually like a safe pointer, right, and a size, and you can make a safe slice out of it from row parts. Is there something like that in C3? Because that's what I want, actually. <laughs> so let's actually see slices, right? So how do you construct a slice? Uh, cool, slice in arrays. Um, and do -do 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 -do. I don't really see. Right, so we have a pointer, uh, slicing intervals. It's not really obvious how to create a slice out of the row parts. And I don't see that. There should be a way to do that, but I just don't see that. That's a shame. Straight up a shame. And in a section of slices, okay, so here is a slice. Uh huh. Is that enough? Wait. So you have a point, right, which is just a number, right? So which is an address. You can slice a pointer in C3. And by slicing a pointer in C3, you create a slice, which is a structure of pointer and side. Do I understand correctly that on a syntactical level, if you try to slice a pointer, what compiler does, it creates basically a slice out of this row part. Is that what's going on? Because that's kind of based, honestly, if you think about it. Right, so, yeah. That is kind of based. What the fuck? Yeah, let's fuck around, sure. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go. Let's fucking go, mate. Let's fucking go. Uh, so essentially pixels and uh, what we can do, so probably I can do something like size, right? And size is going to be x multiplied by uh, 
y multiplied by 4 and to be fair I could actually say we have like four components in here so this is a components and multiplied by the components so and what that means I can do something like size and it has to be yeah minus one and then I can construct a string out of that uh, and in here let's create d string uh, which is basically a buffer All right so pack let's call it a pack All right so this is a pack uh, and we're gonna uh, append the um, chars we're just appending the chars let's see if this entire shit compiles okay uh, so print n mm -hmm. I'll print f uh, so con collected d bytes and we can do pack len i suppose it's probably len or it's probably size or it's probably count okay <sighs> um so well, first of all it's a void len i suppose it's a function i think it's a function let's go Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Uh, to be fair, that's a pretty huge pack of things. It's pretty huge. Are we really gonna be really gonna be baking that into into Wasm? Maybe we could. Uh, right. So apparently it is true. So we just fucked around and we found out, I suppose. Right. So yeah, it worked. Uh, it actually we can go ahead and verify that by grubbing this entire thing and maybe putting that into a separate folder in here so then we can just take boom like that so now um, we can just query replace x with multiplication right there we go so this is an x with multiplication and then we multiply all of that by four right so then we want to sum all of that up we summon all of that up and in the python uh we just oh, can i yeah there we go thank you so much that's exactly how many bytes, bytes we got so it is correct yeah so you can even compare that totally correct okay that's pretty cool uh 100 kilobyte that's a little bit too much but on the other hand, the server, when it's going to serve was a module, it's going to zip it anyway, so it's kind of like, it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Worse than it's been tough to first open Python instead. I'm sorry, I'm not a good Emaxer. I don't really like Emacs that much, honestly. Uh, <clears throat> I think Emacs is a pretty good file manager. <laughs> not sure about the text editor. Not sure about Lisp interpreter, but it's a pretty good file manager. Um, so, anyways, what we now need to we we just need to dump the pack, right? So that's what we need to do. Uh, let me go to somewhere here and uh, io. So here is the file. Can I just write? I can just write byte. Thank you, learner. Very cool. <laughs> oh, you want to write in the file? Here is a write byte for you. Have fun. Uh, so is there just write? Okay, so here it is, so there is just right. Um, that's pretty cool. Mm -mm. But it's, no, can I... So there is a read new or whatever. There was a way to just, yeah, so load temp. Uh -huh. So this is a function that just loads everything. Is there something like save? Like an opposite of load? Because I want to dump the, this entire big. Just, just dump it. Does anybody know? Just like write new save. Maybe it's dump. No, I think there's nothing in here. Right? I think like we literally have to open the file. Yeah, that sucks. That kind of sucks, mate. That kind of fucking sucks. I don't want to open files. Uh, and slurp entire file. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and fucking do that. Like I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't fucking. Know. Um, so if it's a file, okay, so this is just like IO, 
uh, right open and we're gonna be opening the you know pack bin right so that's what we have in here and it returns an exception right so as you can see it may fail right so it may fail so the way we deal with that we just try to open the file like this right so we're trying to open it and in here is going to is going to open so another interesting thing we can do in here actually is we can just open it in here right like so and then try to catch file right and if it fails we can say print n um could not load file uh so let's actually do something like um, string pack path right so i want to move this entire thing to here like so could not load file as and i feel like you can actually do something like this right so you can unpack an error uh, and put it in here so this is the uh, pack path and an error and then you can quit right so as you can see in here we don't return any code so we can return one like this so this is how it works in uh in c3 when you have exceptions and it's not really exceptions it's, these are optional values all right so we just loaded this thing this file still contains um the error we catch that error if there is an error we report it but what's funny is that this also performs auto unwrap unwrap so that means after that the file the variable file contains the file without exclamation mark which is unwrapped already so it does that automatically after this kind of thing this is one of the things i really like in c3 there is a lot of really weird shit in c3 when you look at it and thinking what the fuck was the creator of c3 smoking i want some of that shit, please like when you're trying to for each a hash map, for instance, like what the fuck? Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> when you try to for each uh, like a hash map in C3, it's just like, holy shit, Rust has better syntax than this. But some of the parts of C3 are pretty cool. Some of them are pretty cool, right? So it's, it's kind of an uneven language, right? It's kind of an uneven language. But I mean, it's getting there, it's getting there uh all right so show us you want to see how you are uh, iterate hash map really you you want okay so you do each this is how we do that so you have a hash map uh so and you put dot at each entry open parent don't forget the fucking semicolon don't forget the fucking semicolon only then the entry then close that and the body and don't fucking to forget to put a semicolon in the end of this thing what the fuck is that I, like i'm serious what the fuck is that i have no idea so again there are some cool parts right but the, sometimes there are parts like this right so and it's just like eh I don't understand. What's interesting is that from the syntactical point of view, C3 already has a nice syntactical way to facilitate the for each iteration, right? Because there is a for each which works on arrays. When you iterate an array, like axis, you say, okay, each element for each x in axis, right? And in here, x refers to the element by value. If you want to iterate it by a reference, you just do that. Makes sense. Pretty nice. Uh, right. So, and then if you want to have an access to the indices, what you do, you just put I in here. There you go. You iterate an access, you know the index of the X you iterate in, and you know the X itself. Just apply the same syntax on hash tables. Just, like you already have a syntactical thing to do this kind of stuff. And this is what majority of the people who use the language would expect. Uh, this is what Rust does, like any of the modern languages, as far as I know, right? Jai, by the way, hash tables and Jai also do this kind of stuff. So I suspect that this part of C3 is just simply unfinished, right? It's sort of kind of experimental, and it, I feel like the ultimate goal is to eventually to get to this point. This is just my hypothesis. This is what I would do, at least, if I were making this language. Right, so again, the language is kind of rough around the edges because, again, nobody really uses it actively. Now we use it actively, by the way. So it's getting better and better and better. So 
C3 and a uh, notion of iterators to do that. I think the way C3 handles that is through macros rather. So there is a dynamic array. So I, I don't know for sure. So I don't know why. Uh, so we have collections and there is a list, which is not really a list, which is a dynamic array. And I think there is like an operator overloading that enables you to to just iterate things. Uh, maybe it's some sort of operator. Isn't it this kind of stuff? Uh, mm -mm. I think it's item add. Right, I think it's item add. And basically, the for each automatically picks up this kind of thing. Um, maybe they did that because hash map are not built in and they haven't added iterator overall. Yeah, again, it feels a little bit unfinished, right? So it feels a little bit unfinished. But my point is that as of right now, it looks kind of silly. But I also has a hope that it's in intermediate state and in the future is going to be just like a proper thing. Um, right. Mm -mm. So essentially, um, if you want to start learning C3, like honestly, I would not recommend C3 to people who are only starting to do programming. It's not a really good starting language because again, it's sort of like an alpha language, right? So essentially, I can only recommend this language for people who are willing to alpha test a programming language, which is something interesting that people like to do. For instance, I'm up to alpha test this language. It's kind of interesting. So I'm kind of enjoying it so far. Uh, TypeScript language. This is not a TypeScript language, by the way. This is a serious, uh, you know, statically typed language. Start with Rust. <laughs> what would be the good first language today, honestly? I have a feeling that the first language doesn't really matter that much, honestly. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, it doesn't matter if you are planning to become a serious software development developer. Right. If you plan to become like a Jonathan Blow software developer, I feel like the, the first language doesn't really matter because you're going to end up learning a lot of shit anyway. So it's all going to blur into like a single blob of programming knowledge anyway. It's like it doesn't matter. Um, if you want to just make a quick money by capitalizing on the current trend in tech industry maybe it matters but in that case you're going to be replaced by chat gpt in a couple of years anyway so what's the point um so i don't know it's kind of difficult to say at this point pascal is a good one but but again yes if you're planning to become like a serious software developer like a software developer software developer uh not just a framework handy right who again is going to be replaced by chat gpt anyway um you, if you want to become the, the person who creates the framework for those framework engines, well, that's that's a different kind of topic. And I don't think it remembers that much. I, mm -mm. What's interesting is that I feel like um, the first language, programmers don't choose first language. There isn't anything they think. Program uh, the first language chooses programmer. A lot of people who got into programming themselves, right, they didn't do that intentionally. A lot of people who are serious uh, programmers and who are passionate programmers didn't intentionally go into programming. Usually what they were doing, they were fucking around. They were fucking around with uh you know minecraft modes some other modes some lua scripts for their favorite game and stuff like that they were just fucking around uh with some sort of a game and modding for that game used a very specific language and they kind of had to learn that language to actually do something with it so they didn't even have a choice they didn't choose a language the language chose them that's how it usually goes right so people keep asking what's the good first programming language it's not even about the language it's about mindset people with a certain mindset 
that just likes to experiment and fuck around will stumble upon a language that will just choose them because they will have no choice but learn that specific language to do the thing they want. You know what I'm talking about? Or, or action script, by the way. So Flash was a huge thing back in back in the day. So people were kind of forced to do uh, action scripts. So you know what I'm talking about? It's, it's not like you choose the language, usually. It's, it's the language, some kind of language just chooses you because you were just fucking around. Isn't that an interesting thought? It never really occurred to me before. It's just like, the, what's the good first language is not really the right thing to ask. Right. Because if your mindset is fit for programming, the language will find you and you will have no fucking choice. That's pretty interesting. Anyways. <laughs> oh, I, f I fucked up the today command. I'm, I'm really sorry, guys. I forgot to update the today command. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue. What we were doing, um, we need to check if this entire thing still compiles. So open doesn't even open think. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, so is that, oh, because it's module file. I apologize, my friend. So it's actually file. I made a severe lapse of judgment. Uh, okay, let's go. And this is not the place where I want to be. Okay, uh, pack path. You didn't like my pack path? Big uh, packer. What am I doing? Uh, it's 31. So what you don't fucking like? Expected one more argument. Huh, are you for real? What other argument do you want? Mode? I, I'm, I'm gonna assume that native F mode just redirects, uh, just redirects to the libc F mode, right? So I think that's what it does. So we're gonna just assume write binary in here. Uh, right, just like write binary. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so what's the next error? Uh, this argument would be exceeded the number of parameters. Oh, that's... Um, yeah, I see, I see what's going on. So yeah, I forgot that it has to be F. <laughs> All right, so missing return at the end. We're almost there, guys. I almost compiled this piece of code. <laughs> Let's go! Let's fucking go! Uh, and I suppose it created somewhere, right? So, pack... Yeah, there we go. Pack bin. Uh, and it's actually zero. Uh, right, so it's, it's actually zero in here. So, because we never actually wrote z bytes. We never actually wrote z bytes. And what we want to do, we want to write z bytes. Right, so write uh, chars or bytes. I don't remember. So, this is file. Uh, write... Um, Sister, sister, so what, what, what do you write? Bruv, I forgot what you can write. Oh, I think it's just to write. Yeah, it's just a buffer. Okay. The question is, I won't be able to just take the pack and write it because it's a D string, right? So you, you can't just do that. You need to convert D string to a string. So is there something that returns you a string? Okay, so string view. This is exactly what we want, right? This is actually kind of perfect. So then we can do str view. Damn! Look at that. Look at that nice code. Uh, so it's not right choice. It's just right. Uh huh. Oh, and this thing can actually fail, right? So in, in that case, we can we can just do something like if catch. Uh, right. So we can just say something like I.O. printf uh, could not uh, write. Um, could not open, could not write file s because of, I don't really know the reason. We, we can just take the error like so uh, and just put it in here. So it's going to pack path error return one. Uh huh. So it's not error, but it's error. Damn, bro. look at that sexy, sexy coat. Who needs rust? Who needs... Look at that shit, bro. Look at that shit, bro. Dub, dub, dub. <laughs> it has print fn for... Really? 
Wait, 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 wait. So did, did they fix that? D damn, this language is getting better and better and better with each release. I really like that. So yeah. So you you want to make something better? Just start using it, right? And start contributing the feedback and shit. Holy fuck, a fan. Yo, that's perfect. Uh, so using particular style formatting appending. That's that's perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, 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 okay. That's one of the annoying things of all of these formatters, and especially in Go. Right, so there's a print a um, So you keep forgetting about this stuff. Uh huh. So let's get rid of that stuff. Uh huh. And honestly, I would like to maybe append like an error in there, indicating that oopsie doopsie, fucky wucky. Uh -huh. That's what I, I want to indicate. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's pretty cool. Um, we can take a look at the file itself and see if it contains z bytes. So here are z bytes. The encoding is probably fucking uh, obnoxious, abysmal. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, the problem here is that we don't really know the offsets. Uh, honestly, we have no idea about the offsets. We kind of need to collect the offsets. So let's actually introduce something like offset. Uh, and here we're going to have a um, file name and maybe the offset, maybe the value of the offset. And let's maybe create a collections list, right? So we're going to have a dynamic array. So I'm going to define uh, offsets, which is going to be just a list of offsets. Uh, offsets, offsets. Cool. Uh, and every time, every time we are about to append, append the file, we're going to do something like push. So uh, file name, we push in the file name and the current size of the pack, right? Because that is going to be the offset within the thing. So afterwards, afterwards, after we successfully did everything, we want to actually print all of that stuff. So offset of offsets, uh, it's actually for each. Uh, right, and then I will print fn. Uh, right, so it's going to be s, and this is the offset. Well, you're going to have to put n in here. Uh, offset file name, offset value. Right, and now if I try to print that, I forgot a little bit of a, a semicolon. What's the next error? There we go. So here are all of the offsets. So by these offsets, you can find the actual data of the things. So that's pretty cool. We need to somehow save those offsets somewhere. We can print them somewhere, actually. We can actually print them somewhere, but where should we print them? Uh, I'm not sure. We can maybe create pack C3. You need size. That's true, actually. That is actually kind of true. Um, hmm. So maybe because of that, I should call it uh, maybe asset. Yeah, so let's call it asset. So I'm going to query replace offset with asset. Can your Vim do that? I already bragged about this feature, but there is a very based feature in Emacs is that when you're trying to basically replace uh, offset with asset, if Emacs sees offset, it will uh, detect it automatically and replace it with asset, preserving the case. This is what it can do. Right, and this is how I quickly just rename asset to offset, also preserving all the cases, all the things. Can your Vim do that? It, it probably can. There's probably some sort of a mod that you can enable, but I mean, it's actually kind of cool. Um, a plugin can uh, probably do that. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it's uh, by default. It's on by default. They added that to VS Code recently. Well, it's, it's actually a very useful feature for programming specifically. For programming specifically, because in programming, you usually duplicate names of types and variables, but at a different case. So programmers like to encode whether the kind of the object with the casing. Right. So you, you guys know what is a kind, right? So when programmers say kind, they mean 
the kind of the thing. So you have a variable, the variable has a type, right? And then you have a kind. A kind is type or variable, right? So a kind is sort of a type that is higher level. It's, it's my internal Haskell speaking right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so programmers like to encode different kinds of entities within the code with different cases. The kind the type is usually capitalized and the kind variable is usually not capitalized. That's what I'm saying. Um, kind is the type's father. Yeah, exactly. So by, by kind, functional programmers usually mean the type of the type, right? So uh, what's interesting is that compiler developers know that, right? And in the source code of the compiler, quite often you can notice that in, like in AST node, there is a type and sometimes there is a kind, type of a type, right? So uh, as far as I know, in functional programming in Haskell, also, people also like to talk about sorts, right? So type of a kind, right? So if you have like a high level type of a kind, it's a sort. Right. So you have types, kinds, sorts. So that's the hierarchy. And that's why Haskellers don't have any job. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> uh, let's continue. Uh, we need to print this shice somewhere. Where are we going to be printing it? So what I want to do is um, just format it somehow. Right, so we probably want to just format it. So if I introduce, yeah, so this is an asset. So this becomes offset, uh, right? And this becomes the size, right? That's what it becomes. Uh, becomes the size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, let's go to the completioners. Error uh, 33. So the, we're pushing this kind of stuff. So this is the offset, all right? And this is the, well, that you kind of have size. So the only thing we need to do, we need to introduce offset. Uh -huh. Let's go. So that is cool. So backlang, uh, it doesn't like that I'm explicitly, okay, so let's call it use size then. Are you okay now? Okay. 54, this is offset, uh, and then asset, uh, asset size. So, and if we want to turn it into C3, what we want to do essentially is just something like this. So it's going to be S, then D, D, S, yeah. That's essentially what we want to have in here. Uh, we can put a comma in here and then Pad it a little bit like so, and then print fn new, and then close this entire thing. Right, so as you can see at the end, this is what we got. Right, and you can always do some some stuff like I don't know, asset, uh, asset, 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 asset. So and this is going to be just assets. You know what's interesting is that you can always take this thing and move it into common common module that is shared between client and server and potentially packer right so this code that we automatically generated is going to be included into the client and a client is going to uh, use common and asset is defined there so it's synchronized the asset type is synchronized between the actual user of this thing and the producer of this thing. So yeah, because the, the common module is going to be included in all of them. Okay, so this is actually kind of cool. So our architecture now consists of client, um, server and the packer and they share a common thing. This is kind of cool, right? So yeah, so the packer may use the same types as the client and the server so they can agree on the format of the things the packer is producing. That is kind of based, isn't it? That is... Yo, what the fuck? That's so fucking cool, mate. That's so... Okay, so let's actually try to do that. And what does it say? It doesn't... Ah, yeah. So to, to be able to compile this entire thing, of course, 
what you have to do, you have to put a common uh, C3 in here. Let's go. Okay, so you need to provide a list in a common C3. That's understandable. So it's going to be collections, list. Let's go. Oh, right. We're almost there. So it doesn't like something. Items count. You long cannot be implicitly. Ah, fuck. Bitch. Shit. Damn. Heck. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Common is usually compiled for WASM32. And we are trying to compile Common for x86-64. So, the sizes of some types are completely fucking different now. Which is kind of fucking dangerous. So, because we're using very specific types for binary protocol. So that means if we compile server natively to a native type, to a native executable, some of these things in the native protocol are going to shift. But, but that's besides the point. This is something that I have to be uh, careful about. This. So since I was only compiling to WASM32, ULong and INT always had the same size 32 uh, bits. But now I'm compiling it on x86-64, and now they have different uh, sizes and the compiler warns about that which is actually means that this is a good compiler right so because bad compiler wouldn't warn me about this kind of situation and c3 does which is fucking based um so face this problem now or in the future this is the always exactly you know it you freaking know it dude uh yeah so anyway, so essentially what I probably need to do in here, I, should, I have to go through all these errors and just like cast things to uh, int, which is not that bad. I mean, so it's not that bad. Um, so it's just, I, I can just rename it to use size, can I? So how is size is used? Size is used like this. And then we uh, pass it in here and message. Yeah, understandable. Uh, yeah, so it just has a different type. So this is a use size, this is a use size, and this is a use size, but here uh, it becomes smaller. And the reason it becomes smaller is because we then assign it to message size, and message, uh, where is the bigger message? There was a bigger message, I remember, struct message, yeah, it's int, it's specifically 4 bytes, it has to be 4 bytes actually. So which is rather interesting. So we have to be careful. So I suppose one of the, yeah, I, th I think the only type that changes its size, the only type that changes its size, uh, depending on the platform is use size. So basically the, the policy could be don't use use size in the protocol, right? So use int, u int, char, short, all of those types, they preserve the size. Why does it have to be four bytes? Because that's the convention we established. Because the client expects four bytes. Uh, and why client expects four bytes? Because server sends four bytes. So that's usually justification of anything in software development. Like why do things the way they... Because the, the, it, it happens, sorry. <laughs> mm -mm. People say Discord is banned. I, I don't know what you're talking about. So I honestly don't understand what you're talking about, my friend. It's working. It's worked. I think this is a I think this is a Russian disinformation. More like these nuts formation. Oh <clears throat> sorry. So <laughs> Uh, so let's take a look at the rest of the thing. So 202. And yeah, this one is interesting. So I suppose I want to explicitly put int in here. Yeah, so that makes sense. These nuts of formation. Uh, it's in the new... Dude! You think I don't know that Discord is banned? I swear to God, people. I swear to God. Anyways. Mm. 
<clears throat> Imagine using Russian internet without VPN. Imagine that. German streamer. <clears throat> uh, to O2 oh, two banned in Russia. <laughs> okay. Breathing through VPN. And ironically, breathing through VPN. Uh, so basically, assume that everything is going to be banned. Just assume that <laughs> and continue living your normal life. So just be ready. <clears throat> All right. So, yep. Seems to be working. Seems to be working. Mm -mm. Uh, we probably want to save this thing to a separate file. What's interesting is that um, C3 has a very cool feature called exec. This is where fun begins, my friend. This is where fun begins. Execute script at compile time and include the result in the source code. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> it's so fucking over for Zeke. I'm telling you, it's fucking over for Zeke. It's just like, uh. anyways. Compile time, script injection time. Dude, like, I hear this weird argument all the time is that when people see languages like Jai or Zig or whatever, and that they can do arbitrary things at compile time, the first impulse is just like, wait, isn't that insecure? Just like, you can inject some shit in there and we'll execute on your computer at compile time. But think about that. When you are downloading the source code, the first thing you do you literally executing a configure bash script. That is safe, right? <laughs> right. Like, think about that for a second. How is that different from just executing configure bash script? It curl is sage and stuff. It isn't. It's it's the same shitty security. Um the same people who say pipe rust up into SHM. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's already, we're already cooked. We're already fucking cooked. Just relax and try to enjoy it. So <laughs> I see the configure to be extra safe. <laughs> nice one. Mm -mm. Anyways. Mm -mm. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So I'm thinking, how can I incorporate this idea? to to my flow if you know what i mean how can i incorporate because i can basically just i can call a packer through exec it will generate um yeah it will generate the assets uh the, the asset of sets and the pack bin and then later i can include this thing into the final stuff that is kind of cool so but to do that to do that we need to get rid of this output right so we, we should not have any extra output uh we should not have any extra output so let me try to do that uh right and honestly if there is some sort of an error we probably have to exit with the error so i suppose exec fails if the script fails as well uh right if the script fails as well so if there's any error so there should be no warnings or anything like that just like output the thing just output the thing and another thing is probably this one right okay so um i want to try to do a test right so it's going to be test c3 uh we're going to be importing common and we're also going to be importing std io io uh and what i'm going to be doing I'm gonna just do exec, exec, 
uh, pack her. So just pack her. Just pack her. And then I'm going to do for each asset um, assets. Right. And then it's going to be... A, well, I can... I can just print them, yeah, print fn file name as uh, offset d size d. Uh -huh. Asset file name, asset offset, asset size. All right, and now I'm going to do c3c compile run test c3. So asset because it's for each fair common because you also have to include common in here uh, exec not permitted trust the <laughs> we just talked about <laughs> i'm sorry if it's loud um we just fucking talked about it <laughs> Pre-watched, okay. Ah, all right. Ooh, all right, so. S set, okay, and understandable, understandable. Uh, so let's remove that. And acid, okay. I think I'm doing something weird. Fucking works. It fucking works. So it literally called the packer it generated the code that we included and yeah it just did that that is so fucking cool so and after that we actually want to do something like um pack all right so and it's just going to be embed um you know pack bin so let's go ahead and try to do that all right uh, so after that, I probably want to do print fn. Uh huh. And um, we can print the size of the pack. Print fn size of pack d pack len. Uh huh. What do? This correct? It is correct. So. At compile time, we simultaneously generated the pack and then... But here's an interesting thing, honestly. The pack was already there. The pack was already there. So it probably it just included it. What if you have a situation when you have a packer binary but don't have a pack.bin? What if you have that? So in which order these directives are executed? I would assume that they're executed exactly in this order because the consequent lines might depend on whatever happened in here. So let me try. So there is no file pack bin in here. So we cannot open the file. Let's try to compile this entire thing. It compiles. So first it executed that, that generated bin, and then we uh, actually uh, included bin. But Here's another interesting thing. Um, exec supports not only shell scripts. It's actually even cooler than you think. Uh, exec, let's actually see modules. Uh, exec scripting, yeah. Compile foo c3 and bar c3 in the scripts directory invokes the resulting binary with the argument test. You don't need to have the binary packer. You can just pass C3 source code and it will compile it, execute it, and just run it. And then you can include that stuff in there. So let's give, let's give it a fucking try. I'm actually curious how it's going to do that. Um, so packer C3 is obviously not going to work because it depends on STB image and stuff. All right. So this is one of the things we'll have to do. But let's try to run it and see how it fails. Okay, um, it yeah it failed with the okay so it has to be common C three all right, all right that's understandable. The question is, can I put O file in there? Std 
stb image o you can't that is a shame honestly uh, so wait 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 so did i did they do fucky wacky what did they put so this file does exist right this file does exist no it doesn't what the fuck where is the stb it doesn't exist ah because it cleans it up afterwards is that what's going on? yeah i think that's what's going on build uh js mm -hmm. so we need to first build it like this and only then and so one of the things that c3 i suppose does it removes the object files that separator so what's up with separator i don't understand separator is fine okay so let's actually grab this thing uh, so could we replace boom boom okay so if i put this thing in here uh it generated stb image o understandable so now in here i just put this thing in here and if i try to uh run the test it still cannot find that um so <laughs> that probably means it's kind of funny how I have a feeling that it tries to detect that something compile time defining code. Ah, people are talking in the chat. I'm sorry. How exactly? Okay, guys, you know what the fuck that means. You know what the fuck that means. Let's go into the source code of C3 and just figure out how the fuck this shit works. Uh, all right. So I think you can find this thing oh my god oof 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 yeah okay so we have a function uh oh it's a tokenizer okay so this creates a very specific token all right so token uh, if you have a token what was the token name i suppose yeah token type to string you can you can convert it to a string so and then uh st declaration uh-huh st exec so this is the declaration so we'll probably want to look for these things uh-huh so there's different cases i think it's a semi expert i remember when i was hacking c3 compiler everything related to this um meta language of c3 which is usually starts with dollar is located in modules called sema right maybe it's kind of related to the name of that language because c3 actually consists of two languages right so the main c3 language which is closer to c and kind of a second language which is kind of preprocessor but it's a preprocessor that is also aware of the internals of of the language it's preprocessing right so the problem with c is that the preprocessor doesn't know shit about c itself right it just transforms the text so here it's it's actually aware so i think that maybe that's the name of that language so i'm not kind of sure but there's a bunch of modules prefixed with sema and all of the modules prefixed with sema they are related to that meta language of c3 this is what i noticed i don't know what that means i'm not the author of this language i'm just saying my observations <laughs> uh just saying my observations okay so and uh this is where we had some stuff um so compilation all right so this is probably where we want to be uh-huh so something is unreachable so we're just checking some stuff uh and this is return ct mm -mm, some expression or a ct name of uh, so ct exec uh-huh ct exec i don't really see it anywhere in here so maybe so what about this context decal register nothing particularly interesting uh semi decals uh, i would like to maybe 
You know what? I'm gonna grab all of the semo uh, files, right? And I'm gonna just grab exec in them, maybe with underscore, hoping to maybe find something related to what I need. No, it didn't work. What about just exec? What about no uh, case insensitive? Okay, so that's that's weird. Um, am I in the right place? Yes, I am. Um, oh, it's it's in the compiler, I see. And that's where we have to be. Um, yeah, okay. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking for maybe some functions. Uh, uh -huh. Exec append. Okay, exec decal file name. Uh -huh. I think that could be could be something exec argument append to scratch and this is the execution argument expression is const uh -huh. okay this one is interesting semo run exec is not permitted try yeah we even found okay so i should have actually started with the compilation error because that would have been easier to find so exec is not permitted trust level must be that so we found where this compilation error is happening Okay, so that's pretty cool. So we do the attributes file name. Uh huh. Stdnx. Uh huh. Okay. I fucking knew it. Like I, I fucking knew that that's what's going was going on. Like I, it's just like I felt it. I fucking felt it. Anyways, uh, so let's try to rebuild this entire thing. Mm, so let me see. Make J maybe 15. Let's go. Mm -mm. Okay. So test C3. And if I try to now um, do build, it works. So, essentially, you want to try to learn C3 if you are willing to go into the source code of the compiler and hack the compiler to make it do what you want. This language is for these kind of people, right? If you're evaluating whether you want to learn C3, whether you want to commit into C3, are you ready to hack compiler? If yes, go for it. It's actually fun. I really recommend it, actually. You see, it's, the, the source code is actually rather readable. Like, we just found the place and we fixed the, the thing that we needed to fix. Um, easy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. It's for these kind of people. If you're not that kind of person, eh, go program in Zigo or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's actually super fun. Uh, so, let me, uh, let me see. Um, yeah. Is that cool? I think it's pretty fucking cool. Um, you know what would be interesting, actually? For a packer, for a packer, wait, can packer also embed its own shit in here? Actually, we could have, unironically. Instead of saving that pack into a file, we could just generate a text with bytes and stuff. Let me see. So packer C, where is the packer C3? Uh, right, so when we are rendering that, then what we want to render, we want to just render a character Z uh, pack equal this and just iterate bytes um, somehow I don't really know so let's let's do this u size zero less than pack len right and just simply io io print f uh, d that uh, and what we're gonna be printing is just pack I. After that, we want to just close it like this with a fan. We don't even have to put a fan in here. It's just like F. Just like don't even save the pack thing. 
at all. Just forget about it. Forget about the pack. Literally, directly generate this shit in here. Literally, directly generate that shit in here. Isn't that cool? Um, I think that's pretty fucking cool. Man, isn't that cool? I, I, I keep repeating myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, mods? So, who should we ban? So, who should we ban? Uh, Alright, so... Let me see. I'm gonna remove the pack bin. Uh, I'm gonna remove the pack bin and let's go. Okay. Yeah. This is a downside of this entire shit is that C3 compiler consumes all files and remove them. It just doesn't leave them, there. It, it consumes them. Uh, so, yeah. N now you have to recompile that thing one more time. Um, yep, and that's what you have to do. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And now, if I try to do something like this, uh, it kind of worked. Aha. Uh -huh. Indexing. Really? Bruv, bruv. What the fuck? Bruv, bruv. What the fuck? D string. How do I index it? Um, can I get? Or do I have to convert it to string view? Pack view. D um pack string view. Pack view. Uh, eh? Is it size? It's just land, I presume. Let's fucking go. It works. And notice how there's no pack bin. There's no pack bin because we directly generated C3 code in a packer like this. We can run packer on its own just to see what is going Well, I mean, it's kind of difficult to do that, but... Um, right, so let's just tr run the packer on its own, and this is what it does. Uh, right, so, well, you have to do... Damn, the fact that C3 just consumes all files is annoying. You have to recompile them. Why does it do that? This is another, another bug of C3. Right, so it has to be fixed. I, I kind of understand why. It probably has this system uh, where... It itself produces a lot of all files and it tries to clean up after itself. That's why it was vomiting all files in the past. Remember that? That's, that's why. So, uh, yeah, and that's the side effect of that system where your custom all files don't survive that. It's a fix for all files explosion problem. Exactly. Oh, the classical software development. Classical software development. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. But. Who said we can't ex Is there any way to just execute a um, shell command from here without including shit? That would be cool, actually. <laughs> so then, uh, then it, well, it's probably too much, but yeah. But that is fucking cool, honestly. Another cool. Uh, ex yeah, yeah, exec, uh, sh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so we can, but, but the problem here, by the way, is that it includes the output of this entire thing. Right, it just includes the entire output. Uh, so that means it will include the output of the compiler as well. Um, is there anything for the clang to be silent or redirect to null? But that makes it not cross-platform. That's the thing. So we starting to use explicit feature of shell and that is already not cross platform. Like how am I supposed to do that on Windows then? So that's you're opening the whole like a Pandora box. Uh so and that's kind of annoying. But I mean this is not that big of an issue, honestly. This is not that big of an issue. Um 
what we can do th this is why we have built js right so this is literally why we have that uh so yeah anyway i think we're ready to try to maybe build a client like this compile web platform why am I? oh yeah so I'm just, i was just thinking why do we have stb image this is because i was just experimenting with things uh-huh so let me just do that and that is fine so i'm going to try to just do npm run build right so this is just npm run build and uh what we're gonna do we're gonna go into the client c3 first test c3 and i'm gonna just grab this entire thing this is very important and in the client c3 we're just gonna include that stuff somewhere just somewhere at the top in here just somewhere at the top and uh, let's just build this entire thing. So it doesn't compile properly. Oh yeah, it has to be trustful, right? So it has to be trustful. Um, so build JS, and let's put that stuff in here, trustful. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the size of the client before baking all of that shit in the client, 70 kilobytes. Uh, and it still stayed 70 kilobytes because I suppose, I presume, um, yeah, it basically eliminated all of that because it was not using any of that. That's probably why. Uh, even though I explicitly said just to use that. So one of the things we can do, uh, you never included pack bin. Somebody doesn't watch the stream very carefully. You don't have to include it okay so let me see uh, now i want to find a render the game and as you can see here in render the game we accept all sorts of images in here right so we accept all sorts of images um so that's very interesting that is very interesting we can maybe now move them in here okay so they are not part of the arguments anymore the real question though how can we even we need to transform the images somehow we need to transform them somehow because right now images are uh, structures with flexible arrays and I did that because it made the um, interaction with um, JavaScript a little bit easier. Because the JavaScript could just allocate, uh, you know, two 64 bits in here, or it's actually 32, right? Two 32 bits in here, and a little bit of the pixels, and just put all of the pixels in there. So that's why I did that. And I still do that. I still need to, well, I don't need to do that anymore. If I'm going to be, yeah. The, since everything is going to be baked, JavaScript doesn't even need to know about any of these things. So we can actually make it sort of a slice of the pixels. We're making it a slice of the pixels, like so. Uh, color. No stride, yeah, no stride for now, at least. So if I try to compile this entire shit now, how bad is it going to be? Well, look, I just worked. Fuck you. Wait. I coded it in a way it doesn't fucking matter. Hell, man. Hell yeah. All right. So. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. So it means I'm a good programmer, I suppose. Um, so now we need to extract some of those things so first of all i'm gonna make those things something like this um and let's go to i don't even know uh i need to i need to have a packer i suppose so this is gonna be the image and okay i suppose i need a function that will get me um bytes by file name right so pack uh, unpack file name and we're going to just accept string file name 
Uh -huh. So, and in here, this entire thing is going to simply, um, I don't know, just return point. Uh, actually, point it to, yeah, just point it to the bytes. Maybe even just void, right? So it has to be void. Um, if it cannot find, we're going to just return null, right? We could have just thrown an exception, but I don't want to deal with that. So for uh, asset, assets, right? So for asset, assets, if uh, file name is equal to the file name, we found it. So we take the pack uh, asset offset and we just return that. Interestingly, we can, okay, so we can maybe just return the asset then. I think it would be just easy because now you know the size. Uh, so asset by file name. So you get asset, uh, right, just asset. And here you just return null if you couldn't find that. Uh, if you couldn't find that, um, so asset width and height but i mean our in our case asset yeah i preemptively made assets too generic that's the problem chat i'm going to only store images in there but i already made it too generic let's actually make it very specific so i'm gonna go into the common and i'm gonna actually call it uh, you know, image asset. Yeah, so image asset. So string file name uh, is going to be offset, but then it's going to have width and height. How about that. Architecture is too clean, exactly. That's what happened. Architecture is too goddamn clean. Uh, death by abstraction. So, yeah, that's true. Image assets. Uh, so let's be specific. Maybe, okay, so I'm not going to rename it because that will mean I have to rename too many things. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's try to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, so it fails somewhere, I'm not really sure where. Uh, it fails at client uh, 839. Uh -huh. So it doesn't have... Ah, it's a for each. Understandable. Error. Too few arguments. Okay, so now it fails in packer 27. Uh, so we have offset, size, width and height, x and y. Right, that's what we're gonna have in here. Uh-huh, error. There is no field type, so this is in the packer 48. Uh -huh, that's understandable, so that means we're gonna have this. So offset, width, asset, height. Let's go. Uh-huh, what's the next error? It's not possible to cast asset to asset point. Uh, that's also understandable. Uh, all right, all right, right. 41. Uh, it's actually client 41. Mm -hmm. So because it has to be pointer. So though we can do something like this. Yeah. So now I want to return actually pixels. Uh, pixels, asset, pixels. Now let's do let's do asset, right? Because it has a size and stuff like that. Uh, in point time, and just return. So that should be fine now. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So okay, we're ready to go. Um, what I want to do? Asset by file name. Mm, so what's going to be the file name? We'll go to the packer key. So that's what we have. So we take an asset by this. So asset, uh, key asset. And we want to construct an image out of the key asset. We want to construct an image out of the key asset. So how are we going to be doing that? So the image is width and height. Uh, struct image. Yeah, it's a width and height. So we take key asset. You know what? Let's actually have one. So because it's going to be easier for us then to work with that. Uh, key image, mm -hmm. asset width, asset uh, height, and the pixels are pack asset offset pointer color. 
is it going to be a problem in the future because color is a vector? I don't think so, but it may become a problem in the future. Uh, okay, so error 849, forgot that, okay. Uh-huh, what's the other error? It's not possible, uh, th that's fine. So now, every time we refer to key image in here, we have to do something key image like this. Not this one, but this one. Yeah, so there's only one in here. So now it should just compile, but it will fail with some other things. Uh, 857. Yeah, so now it fails with other things. Fine. Um, so what we have to do in here, now we have to take a bomb, uh, particle, uh, wall, and player. Right, I suppose we do have all of them. Yeah, so because they're simple like that. Uh-huh. And we can simply just like copy paste the whole thing. There we go. It's a little bit unreadable. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I think we can live with that. So I'm going to go through all of the compilation errors a little bit, but maybe I'm going to do. Um, yeah, it's, it's better to go through the compilation errors. Uh huh. Error 61. Client 861. Aha, uh -huh. so this is a bomb image. Let's go through all of the underscore images. Uh huh. Like so. Like so. Uh, I don't see shit in here. I think that's the, basically the last one. No fucking way. It just compiled, motherfucker. All right. You know what would be cool? If we'd actually find all of that shit that compiles them. Let me try to go to client MTS. And the thing we're going to be doing right now, by the way, we're going to go into the render game. We're going to get rid of all of the images in here, right? So we were passing all of these images into the render game because we couldn't actually get them. Uh, right. So, and also... In the asset manager in JavaScript, we should get rid of all of these things as well. Right. So that creates like a seven compilation errors, but that's totally fine. Let's go through, uh, through all of them. So what's the next error? Uh -huh. So we don't pass any of this stuff into TypeScript. Next error. So this is just a warning, whatever. Okay. So we don't actually pass any information in here. Uh, and that's it. So when we create a game, yeah, well, we're still loading this shit. We should not load. Yeah, so all of that code goes away. So that means all of that code goes away. Um, so load wasn't... So loading images is not a needed thing. Right, it's not something that we need anymore, honestly. It's just not something that we need anymore. Uh, and in wasm client... We had uh, an opportunity to allocate image and also get the image pixels. We also don't need neither of these things anymore because all of the images are inside of Wasm module. Uh, but we need to actually get rid of them on the level of Wasm 2. So client C3, here's the function. We don't allocate shit anymore. And image pixels, we don't need that stuff anymore either. And they are not correct anyway, right? So because JavaScript code was assuming that those things were structured with flexible array members, we changed them into just slice, which is three numbers, width, height, and pointer. So the assumptions of a JavaScript code about the image in the WASM memory is incorrect anyway, so we don't want to even do anything about that. Uh, right, so yeah, all of these functions are gone. So, and I really like when this interface actually shrinks because that's the interface through which the JavaScript code communicates with the WASM code. The smaller that interface is, the smaller the surface area that creates a friction, right? Because this is where all the friction happen. So my goal is to make this thing as small as possible. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Smaller than my PP. pee. Oh, 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 got him. So we don't have to do that, and we don't have to do that. Cool. Uh, and it compiles, I suppose, right? So it totally compiles. Um, let's take a look at the client wasm. So client wasm was 70 kilobytes, 
and now it's 172 which is actually exactly what we would expect because the assets weigh 100 uh, kilobytes so since we're now using the pack it's not that code illuminated so it's now part of the pack right but this is actually a cool thing because um before we were loading assets separately uh, now uh, we are loading code game game code and the assets simultaneously with a single fetch Xip it. that's actually a cool idea so let's actually exhibit it and see how small it becomes i exhib the wrong thing i'm sorry <laughs> gun zip uh yeah so let's exhib it uh, 30 kilobytes i think it was like that already even before the like it's 30 kilobytes come on it's just 30 kilobytes uh so and this is what these servers will do automatically if you configure them to do that um right so at least github when it serves the assets it actually exhibits them i don't know if http server that we have in here actually exhibits anything um so where is the serve js serve js right is there any way to say zip things http server node http server where is the documentation i think there was a yeah, I think there was documentation right in there. So I can do node modules bin HTTP server. This is not what I want. Uh, help. Do you have any help? Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, you, you can actually zip. I Okay, let's actually enable zipping on the, on the test server because why not? I think it's a good idea. I think it's straight a good idea. So yeah. Oh, well, I mean, so false goes here. Um, so let's put it somewhere here. Where is G? So now when it's served, uh, it is going to zip all of that stuff. Okay. I think that is it, actually. Huh. Uh, okay, so let me rebuild everything one more time. So I think TSC is enabled. Uh, we're using a little bit of a clang, right, to just build STB image. Uh, right, so let's also rebuild server just in case. Even though we're not we were not messing with the server in any way uh, apparently we will okay so something with the client aha uh -huh. client c3 what ah because i removed some of the functions 24 Ooh. okay okay so because we're uh, allocating image internally for the display okay so let's bring allocate image back but this one is slightly it still vomits the old files <laughs> But anyway, uh, so let me let me see. So what was the client C3 allocate? Uh, I think the thing I'm going to do, by the way, by the way, um, this has to be like this. Uh huh. Image pixels. Uh huh. Uh, pixels um so mem calloc we're allocating color all right we're allocating color but we're taking the size of this thing and multiplying by width and by height that's that's what we did all right so uh, let's try to compile is it compiling no it's not compiling what else do we want there's no field image pixel because there's several of them it's pixels let's go uh all right it's not okay so this one is rather interesting now so there's a few places where we have to pass literally a pointer uh -huh. so this is what it wants it wants to do that by pointer that's fine okay the entirety of the thing finally compiles the entirety of the thing finally compiles. i hope it's not gonna trip over itself right because i did a little bit of an assumption checking about the memory layout and it's kind of dangerous honestly i like to do this kind of shit, but i kind of have to all right so since the code that was using this assumption is going away anyway so it was kind of fine kind of sort of never know but i mean let, let's go serve uh okay so yeah uh, tripped over itself. Oh fuck! Uh, eh. How do I? How do I do the dark mode in here? Can anybody tell me? 
settings dims dark okay do we have anything we have anything we don't have shit brother doesn't even throw an exception useless fucking useless it's funny like what the fuck is going on here why is it so bad um probably because it never refreshes or anything um okay it's totally fine what's funny is that i think um need direct x11 yeah i feel like it might be crashing yeah it doesn't even refresh shit that means it doesn't produce any pixels or maybe it just maybe it just produces like like a transparent ones maybe that's what's going on uh yeah that is totally bizarre that is totally bizarre and i wonder what is going on hmm. we can maybe assert something so assert asset to be a thing that actually exists mm -hmm. right so just assert assets and i hope that when you assert it will actually do the thing wasm to what i don't think it's time for wasm to what yet i don't think it's time for wasm to what wasm to what uh we need to make it at least fail all right just to see what kind of assumptions are broken in here something is definitely broken um but the player is still playing so it just it just works to some extent mm -hmm. so what if i just leave a rendering of the floor for instance um oh yeah maybe the, this could be something with the display <gasps> so resize display okay so here's the pixels i allocate new pixels of the size so these are the colors and stuff like that that's understandable and then display image width um okay i see okay uh. <laughs> of course uh of fucking course let's fucking go let's fucking go mate holy shit it works it actually works so now look chat to look at the network look at the network do you see any images well i mean there is a favicon but apart from that look at that there's only a uh, client mgs common mgs Client Wasm and Favacon, which is uh, featured automatically. Is that? The images that were loaded before, um, you know, by the browser, they are now baked into the Wasm. Right. We can even compare that with the previous situation. So, uh, right. Let me try to rebuild this thing with the previous stuff. We are starting the whole thing. Um, right. So I'm going to just do it like that. As you can see, here are the PNGs. So we refresh, it loads all of the PNGs in here. It loads all of the PNGs. But now, if we go back, uh, right, let's pull the stash. Um, I understand what the fuck you want, but. Mm, this is a very dangerous situation. Let me remove uh, all files just in case because it's kind of difficult to see what the fuck is going on um so let's also remove that and that oh, i think i know what the fuck is going on yeah so and then uh and stash all right and then rebuild the whole thing yeah so now i'm gonna refresh there is no image files right because they're part of the wasm uh, and the size of the wasm is 175 kilobytes. Does it show the compressed one though? 
Uh, I don't really know. Like, is there any way in Firefox specific to see the compressed one? We can take a look at the Chromium. Right, so let's take a look at the Chromium. Um, so... Mm -hmm. Why does it put it on the side? It's very inconvenient. Uh -huh. Dark theme. Alright, let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright. Now it still shows the uncompressed one. But I mean, if you compress it, it goes down to 30 kilobytes. But anyway, we succeeded. So we actually managed to bake this kind of stuff. And we were using quite a few C3 magics, right? So essentially we created a packer that reads all of these images and just spits out the C3 code, kind of similar to PNG to C. But the thing is that we don't really have to even um, save it to a separate file and then compile it separately. Because the thing that C3 can do now it can actually like do that uh, all of that stuff for you, right? So we just say compile the packer, right, with istb image, and just run it and include everything it generates into here as this uh, as the text, and then compile it. So it just sort of like streamlines streamlines the thing that I was doing in C anyway, right? Which is kind of cool. The only downside, the only downside is that it removes that goddamn istb image o. That is kind of meh. It would be also kind of cool to be able to call C compiler from here, so to compile all, right? Maybe it should just have a built-in C compiler like Zeek. So that would be actually kind of cool. So maybe should le learners should think about that. Uh, right, so because we're competing with Zeek, right? Right, we're competing with Zeek? I don't know, probably not. Not competing with anybody. Just shit posting on the internet. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. I like that. I, I really, really fucking like that. So let's take a look at uh, what we need to commit in here. So uh, math, we don't need math. We don't need any of that stuff. Uh, all right. So we only need the packer and the rest of the things. Okay. Let me try to recompile this one more time. Mm -hmm. And let's just do a committee committing. Mm -hmm. So pack all the images into client wasm and i'm going to push that right into the repo uh okay so i wasn't wasn't acknowledging subs for a little bit i really apologize for that because i was really busy with the code thank you so much Geozi mc for twitch prime burakus lindero thank you so much for twitch prime and snowy api thank you so much uh dexas ttp thank you so much for tier one subscription thank you thank you thank you isn't that poggers my friend isn't that fucking poggers I think it's pretty fucking progress, right? So it's not perfect by any means, honestly. It's not perfect by any means. Uh, but I think it could become better in the future. I do think so. I think it could become better. All right. That's it for today. Thanks, everyone, who's uh, watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next uh, recreation programming session with uh, Mr. Azuzin. I love you. Mwah. This is the footnote of the session because uh, I realized that I committed the code that is not compilable but by any of the C3 compilers in the world because I just used the feature that I just hacked on the stream. So uh, let's quickly fix that. So I'm going to go into the uh, C3 compiler and I'm going to reverse the changes that I made. I'm going to eventually try to submit them as a pull request because I think it's a pretty valuable feature. But as far as I know, learner doesn't really like uh, exec macro because um, he doesn't like the way people try to use it, right? So maybe he's not going to accept that, but I'm going to try anyway. So uh, for now, I just want my code to be compilable at least by the compiler that you can get from the official source code, right? So I think that's important. So what's the changes? Let's take a look at them. So that's a very simple change. I'm going to stash it just for now, and I'm going to go ahead and recompile the compiler back uh, super quick. So I'm going to use as many threads as possible. So it goes faster. It doesn't really matter because everything depends on one single slow dependency. So we still have to wait for it. Uh, though, no, it was actually fine. I think it was linking that was taking the most amount of time. Uh, so let's try to reinstall the whole thing. Uh, and now if I go into my project, coil, uh, and try to compile the whole thing, npm run build, it is not going to compile. 
right because it, it cannot run stb image it can compile stb image o from that specific exact macro thingy so i guess the solution for now is going to be actually compile the packer into the executable and then call the packer executable from the exec uh, right so let's go into the client c3 um, where is the exec so here it is instead of doing that we're going to be just calling the packer but we need to make sure that it is build so let's go into the build.js so okay here we build the stbo right after that we need to build the packer let's go ahead and do that uh, it's going to be c3c and here come the arguments for the packer for the for the compiler rather so let's do compile and uh, so we have to provide the packer c3 uh, we also probably have to provide the common um, uh, common c3 and also stb image o do we need to provide anything else i don't think so so for now i'm going to actually disable compiling client and the server uh right and let's just see what is going to happen if i just try to build that so is it building the packer? It is in fact building the packer. But I don't want to build the client before the packer has built successfully. So I guess I need to do another nested, you know, on close thingy. Uh, so as far as I know, the server right now doesn't really care about the packer, so it's not dependent on it. So let's do the following thing: on close uh, data like so, and I'm gonna wrap it around uh, like this. Uh, so I know it's dumb and pretty prone to uh, come um, call back hell, but I'm gonna fix it later. Right. So as already said, for now this is a very simple thing that is manageable. As soon as it becomes unmanageable, I'm gonna try to fix that. It's totally fine. Uh, right. So data is the exit code of that specific command, and if it's not zero, just return that. Uh, right. And after that, it's going to be compilable. While Packer and the client are compiling, we can, in a separate thread, compile the server because it doesn't depend on the Packer stuff or anything like that. In fact, by the way, it doesn't depend on STB uh, image either. So that means we can actually make it completely independent. Right. So these are two separate tasks. The thing about CMD is that uh, it runs, you know, as asynchronously. Right. So it runs in parallel. Uh, right, so to make it sort of run sequentially, we have to do something like this. I'm pretty sure this is possible to sort of like a syncify or promissify or something like that, but I couldn't be bothered to actually research how to do that right now, so I'm just doing it in a dumb way. Um, okay, so let's actually go ahead and try to build the whole thing. Uh, right, is it building? Is it working? Is it? I think it is working. It is, in fact, working. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let me try to maybe start the server to make sure that everything is working uh right let's go here and uh so yeah let's do npm run surf uh-huh and let's maybe open localhost okay everything seems to be working so that's fine uh so let's go ahead and commit the fixed version um, so we have some stuff in here. Maybe I want to git ignore the packer, actually. We probably need to introduce some sort of a folder where all the artifacts that are not committed into the source code will go, uh, like packer and stuff like that. Uh, right, so fix the compilation of the packer. All right, fix the compilation of the client with packer. Right, and I'm going to push that right into the repo. All right, that's finally it. Thanks, everyone, who's watching me right now. Really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you on the next recreational programming session with Mr. Zosin. Adios. Mwah.